What is going on guys? Welcome back to the free trading game collection. I went round some charity shops today. I've actually been in here before and I'll show you the footage. Of course, this was where the whole video of me not slagging off charity shops, but just asking the question, why are they so expensive? This one in particular had two Wii's. None of them had Wii remotes. One of them had a third party controller, which means you can only play a handful of games out of the box because most would require a Wii remote to even get past the main menu. They wanted 30 quid a piece and they're essentially just the base unit with some wires. That prompted me to of course make the video how out of touch charity shops are and they don't even research things that they have, they just slap a price tag on it and then expect it to sell. So I went back to this charity shop today, not specifically to look to see if they still had the Wii's or anything, it's just one of the charity shops in my town. They've gone very expensive recently but I always check because you never know. They had a fair few games, most of which unfortunately were PC games and a lot of the PC games don't really have that much value because you can easily download load them these days and there aren't that many physical PC collectors. There were a few that I sort of ummed and ahed about, researched, nothing doing, and then I found Final Fantasy on the PS1 and I'm pretty sure it was Black Label as well, which you may say is reasonable. They've done their research there and I thought that in all honesty. And then I went over to the console section and I had a little look and yes, the Wii's were still there. But much to my surprise, they've actually added to their console selection. So there was a tub underneath all of that, which I think might have been there last time actually but I didn't really look at it. They had a black Wii, a black Wii fit board and there were some random games at the bottom. They would just shoved a bunch of wallpaper on top of it for some reason. But this whole tub they were selling it all together and I did have a flick through it off camera and they were all third party like Wii Play, Wii Fit kind of titles all worth about a penny in CEX. They wanted 60 quid for the entire tub. Not quite sure if you've got the wallpaper with that but nonetheless that was ridiculous. As I was looking through this tub some other guy came in and pulled something off the top shelf. A box full of DS stuff and I missed that. Anyway he looked at it and he put it back. I knew therefore it wasn't going to be worth buying but I thought I'd have a look anyway just for a laugh. So I looked at it and it just goes to show that charity shops do not research things, they slap price tags on it for whatever they think it's worth and they just hope for the best. Because in the box there wasn't just a DS Lite which was in pretty decent condition to be fair, some random games that just weren't worth anything, there was also a Switch Grip. Now had you done your research on this you'd know that a Switch Grip is for a completely different console and it has no place being bundled with a DS. The fact that that was even in there, it can't have been a mistake, it was just something that they've lobbed in there because they think it's to do with it because it probably came in together therefore they haven't done their research it was 40 quid for the lot and yeah I put it back on the shelf needless to say my charity shop adventures today were not that great in terms of video games anyway I did buy a few other things that are not video game related but that's by the by there was a PC game that I looked up in one of the charity shops I have to walk out of town into a village to get to this one it was worth the trip actually because I did buy a few things in there but in terms of video games not so much they had a PC PC Call of Duty expansion pack which I was kind of hoping was going to be like this rare thing that you can't download anymore and you have to buy it physical because it had the manual with the code but unfortunately it was about a fiver and they wanted about 253 quid so it wasn't worth me picking up. That does bring me nicely onto a car boot sale pickup that I am going to throw into this video. It was a Game of Thrones well box set maybe I, I guess you could call it. With one of these um, I don't know if it was a house clearance guy but he had a van and he had loads of tables full of just random stuff and he had bags of DVDs on the floor. A lot of them were sealed. They were sort of trash, you know, 90s titles that no one really cares about. No collector is going to buy them sealed or not. However, he did have this. This is Game of Thrones, the complete fourth season, brand new and sealed, but it is the limited packaging illustrations by Robert Ball. That is a mouthful, uh, but there we are. That there uh, was 50 pence. I don't know if I have any footage of this whatsoever because I, well, I mean, maybe I do. I probably, I'll show you if I have done. Yeah, I, I didn't really look it up. I just thought it, it's sealed. It's a box set. It's Game of Thrones. I've never seen that before. I know what the Game of Thrones covers look like and the special editions here, you know, you can get like HMV exclusive, Zavi exclusives and things like that. So I looked this up after I bought it and yeah, I could easily get 10 quid for it, but I am going to shoot for a little bit more. So I've put it up there for about 20. Probably not going to achieve 20, but if I can get 10, it's 50p into 10 pounds. I'm not going to pass up on a 50 pence deal that could even get me a fiver. So I'm going to put 8 pounds 
pounds profit into the series, even though I think I can get a little bit more and I will adjust it as and when it sells. Over to Vinted now, and it's been a little while since I've picked up something from Vinted. I do see a fair few things on there to be honest, but it's nothing too uncommon and it's only really saving me a couple of quid here or there, which I'm all about, don't get me wrong. You know, money's money at the end of the day, whether it's a pound or 10 pound, it doesn't make a difference. However, I decided to leave a lot of these things for other people. Not that I'm being generous or anything, it's just a case of I'll find them somewhere and I would much rather find them in a shop. However, something that I won't likely find in a retro video game store as cheap as I've managed to get it or indeed in a boot sale is this blast from the past. This is the Page Master. It is a, a movie to game starring Macaulay Culkin. Uh, now, I will admit that I have never seen the movie. However, my wife loves the movie and she didn't even know this game existed. Well, I say that. She, she now reckons she's seen the cover. She's like, actually, I think I might have played it. So yeah, I thought I'd pick it up because I saw it really, really cheap on Vinted. I've had this for quite a while now, so I cannot remember for the life of me how much I paid, but it is on screen. Uh, so yeah, was really happy to pick it up, especially as it's complete as well. And to be fair, it's in really good condition. The manual has been opened and sort of left open on a particular page. So there is a bit of like a crease in it, but in terms of how nice it looks, yeah, the label is fantastic. The manual is really, really good. It's not an expensive game by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm really happy to be able to pick it up for the price that I got it for. Now we come to another car boot sale pickup. It's not a game, but it is game related. Uh, I don't know how good the footage is and if indeed I have any footage at all. We actually spent a lot of time at this store. They had a fair few things we were interested in. So I saw some Disney figures and we immediately are drawn to anything Disney in this house. So I had a little look and then I realized that they with Disney Infinity 3.0 figures. Now, I know nothing about this, and of course, I know they're nowhere near as pricey as the Amiibos. In fact, I think there are only a handful of these Disney Infinity figures that are worth anything. The rest of them are worth like a pound or two. So I'm having a little look through, and I'm looking at them purely from a just decorative standpoint. You know, I can put them next to Disney games, I can put them on the shelf, and they'll just look cool. I'm never going to use them how they were intended, but they just look decent. So I'm umming and ahhing about these and I'm thinking, should I even bother asking? Because if they say, oh, a pound each, I don't know if I'd even bother. And maybe they would ask even more. Before I could even say anything, she said, you can have them all for a pound if you want. So yeah, there was absolutely no way I was going to leave them there because even if I bundle all those together and sell them for a fiver, I've just turned one into five. And like I said earlier, money's money. Because when I originally looked at them, it was a case of, I wonder if any of these are worth like five quid each or something. And if I can get them all cheap, one of them could pay for the whole bundle and then away we go. But yeah, when she said a pound each, there was no way I was going to leave them there. I have listed them all, to be fair, the uh, the Nemo one. So Nemo and Dory, I think I could probably get around seven to eight pounds for both of those. And then we have the um, Inside Out one, so Joy and Anger. Again, I could probably get between five and seven or eight for those two alone. And then we have Baloo, which is probably a, a three quid figure. And then the two Star Wars figures, which unfortunately are probably looking at about, I don't know, four to five pounds. So we've done really well there. And I had listed them all with the intention of selling them. However, I've had a bit of a change of heart. So I am going to leave them listed for now, but I'm only really looking to sell the two Star Wars figures. So we have Darth Vader and the other one I don't watch Star Wars. Begins with an A, Ash, Ash something or other. I've no idea. Anyway, going to look to sell those. And if I can get four or five quid for those, I'll be very, very pleased. That will make the money back and a little bit of profit on top because I'm hoping to get the sale through Vinted. And then the rest of them can just stay. I really like the Inside Out film. I think they're making a second one as well. Uh, Finding Nemo, of course, is at these days a classic and Baloo is obviously legendary from The Jungle Book. They will just remain on my Mega Drive shelf for now in and around the Disney games. There is no Nemo game on the Mega Drive, of course, but still, uh, yeah, they can just be decorative pieces for now. So in the last episode, I left you on a little bit of a cliffhanger. I had some things to take into CEX to get credit and I didn't do it. So we are going to do that today. Uh, I got £22 for a Nickelodeon Kart Racers on the PS4. I had Black Ops 3 on the Xbox One and then a select few Wii games. I think there were six altogether. All of those pickups came from the last episode from the boot sale, I believe. Uh, we did pretty well from that one. Uh, the Wii games came from the big Wii bundle that I got. I've sold the Wii now. That went for £25 on Vinted. The games have now been traded into CEX. I still have the guitar left to sell and then we're pretty much done and dusted. We are massively in profit on that bundle. 
But I got £22 in credit and I didn't take this. Now, it's not because I want to keep it necessarily, although I am sort of umming and ah in whether to, to keep it or not. The, the main reason I didn't take this was I could not be bothered for them to test it. I was anticipating it to be quite busy. It's very, very hot today by UK standards. It's 21 degrees. Everyone is literally walking around in pants. Uh, so I, I thought town would be heaving with people uh, because people just want to be out in the sun, walking around in beer gardens or whatever. There's a lot of pubs in my town. And yeah, I was wrong. It was actually quite dead. Probably could have had that tested within 20 minutes. But again, I couldn't be bothered to wait. So I'm going to keep it for now. It only trades in for five quid anyway it'll just remain in the collection until i'm desperate for credit or something so 22 pounds in credit to spend in cex we already had one pound left over as well bang in so that gives me 23 it was like 23 and some change like 20 pence or something so 23 quid to spend in cex could easily have kept that credit to be fair because there are a fair few games in cex i'd like to pick up that are on the more expensive side uh, and i would say more expensive because some of them are very expensive we're talking 300 and something that is actually a console not a game i'll talk about that in a second one of the games i do want to pick up though was just a little bit outside of the budget or in terms of the credit anyway cuphead i have been an admirer of cuphead since before it came out i saw it i thought my god that looks fantastic i love the art style of it it looks absolutely incredible it looks like a really fun frustrating game and i play fifa for a living at one point so yeah maybe not the fun side but frustrating i'm definitely used to so it's something that i want to pick up but 35 pound i only had 23 i don't really want to spend any more money in there today so i decided to leave it i'm hoping i'll be able to get that a little bit cheaper somewhere else even if we have to wait months and months and get it in a black friday or something i've waited this long i can wait a little longer and then i made my way over to the xbox 360 section this is the platform that has the most games that i want to pick up it's not the platform i want to collect for the most that would be the mega drive or the switch or a combination of the two but the xbox 360 has so many games on it that i want in the collection it's going to take me a hell of a long time to get through them all and a lot of these are going to be cheap so when i have like just 23 quid knocking around i can probably knock off quite a few xbox 360 games with that amount of credit now i have only got three games games to show so it's not like I've gone and just bought loads of two pound games although I could easily have done that I looked at a fair few games that were very low in value one of the only times actually I didn't go upstairs and look at the Wii U section I probably should have done that it's been a long time since I've added a Wii U game to the collection but on this occasion I thought it's an Xbox 360 kind of day I did have a look at the PS3 incidentally they had a Tomb Raider HD collection for 10 pounds which I think is a very reasonable price to be charging for this I think on the Xbox 360 I remember once I actually I went into CEX they had it on the 360 and I bought it and flipped it for an extra 10 pounds on eBay and it sold to a guy that literally lives the street over so I walked it to his house just as a quick side note I would recommend that you not do that if you are selling things on eBay you need proof that you've delivered the item so unless you take a picture or film it or something if that guy had said that he hadn't received it I know I know where he lives and he knows I know where he lives but some people are nutters right so if they're confident in their fighting ability and they don't care about any sort of harassment and that he didn't really mind me knocking the door then he could have just marked it as unreceived and he would have had a refund so yeah when you're hand delivering items it's not going to happen very often but i've actually done it uh, a good 10 times at this point make sure you have some proof that you've delivered it so anyway my first pickup is a game that i've wanted for a while and incidentally three of these games are games that i've wanted for a while one of which i've had to make a little bit of a compromise on and i'll get to that in a second this is the cheapest of the three it is on the xbox 360 it it's Medal of Honor Airborne. What an incredible World War II first person shooter this is with a very, very good story. I've been through this kind of thing recently though when I played Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway. That was one of my favorite games or at least my favorite nostalgic type game from the Xbox 360 era alongside Viking and I recently went back and played both of those and I had mixed feelings about Brothers in Arms although I did really enjoy Viking. This isn't on a par with those two for that sort of memory for me but it, it is up there it's a very very good game and i do have fond memories of playing it it is nice condition and complete as well which is really good to see it was only two pound fifty i'm guessing i could find this in a boot sale or a charity well maybe not a charity shop for 250 they'd probably want 22 pound 50 but in terms of a boot sale yeah could probably find it for the same price if not cheaper but uh, i've got a very good condition there and i had the credit so i thought why not the next one is the one that i have done a little bit of a compromise on shall we say so i didn't 
didn't want this on the PlayStation 5. I wanted it on the Switch. I think it's a touch more expensive on the Switch, but it's just a game I see myself playing a lot more in handheld mode than I ever would sat down in front of the TV. But it's been a long time coming, this game. I've watched a few people play through it on YouTube, obviously, where else do you watch videos? And each time you play through it, it is different and you can do different things and take different paths and every decision matters. It's Road 96. This was £12, which I think is just a touch below the Switch price, of course. But this is just a really intriguing game. It looks very, very good, and I hope they bring out some sort of sequel to this. But yeah, in terms of the PlayStation 5 aspect, I have looked at it for quite a while. It's come down in price. It was up there at 20. It's dropped to 18. It dropped to 15. It's now down at 12. Wouldn't be surprised at all if it went lower than this, down to like 10 and 8, of course. And like I said, I would prefer to have it on the Switch, and I will absolutely double dip if I play through this and enjoy it and I find it on the Switch at a reasonable price, I will get it and keep it on both platforms. I have said in the past I don't understand why people do that, but now I do, so deal with it. But yeah, really excited to play that. If you have played this, let me know what you think of it in the comments because it's one of those games that I feel like I could have a lot of fun with and it has that replayability about it as well. So before we get to my final pickup, I headed into Regenerate, which is a pawn shop here. And of course, I think there are a few dotted around the country as well. They sell games and often I pick up the odd gem in here. I had um, Asterix and Obelix. XXL2 in here, undervalued. I picked up FIFA 18 in the past for like two quid and traded it in for 18 next door, which was fantastic. And that's kind of why I went in there. I went looking for sports games because shameless plug, I have just built what I'm calling the TVM Sports Almanac. Essentially what it is, is a huge Excel spreadsheet with over 500 sports games, over 30 different sports and 20 different platforms and every single price to go with them. They've all been individually researched. This thing is full of games that you just wouldn't expect to be worth money, but are. The amount of times I've passed up on FIFAs that I didn't think were worth anything that actually are worth 10, 20, 30 quid is ridiculous. They're all on the list and thank you to everyone who has bought it so far. It really does mean a lot. You can find it in the link in the description. Anyway, back to it. So I'm having a little flick through and I'm trying to find some of these sports games that I've recently put on the list. And I'm finding a few things here or there that I wouldn't really have looked up before. And yeah, they've got a little bit of value to them, but they've caught it and they've priced it accordingly or a couple of quid under market value at least. But then there was one game that I thought I'll have a look at, UFC 2. Much to my surprise when I picked it up, it was sealed and they only wanted $3.99 so I thought well UFC 2 is I wouldn't say an expensive game but it's got a little bit of value to it on the PlayStation 4 hopefully it does on the Xbox One although it is part of EA Play and you get EA Play when you sign up to Game Pass so it's going to have less value but because it's sealed hopefully it's worth a little bit more and yet it was so I got it for four quid here it is the seal isn't perfect unfortunately there is a small tear on the corner but it is still like Xbox sealed here $3.99 should be able to get the stickers off it easily enough. This should sell realistically for about 20 quid on eBay. You can get this cheaper sealed, but it's ESRB. There's only one PAL sealed on eBay right now, and I think it's like 30, 40 quid. The most recent sold sealed is about 13, which is not ideal. I would prefer to get a little bit more, obviously. But um, yeah, I mean, you can only get it 30, 40 quid right now anyway. So if I put mine up for like 20, I'm sure I'll get an offer of 15 or maybe even sell it for 20 at some point. Four into 20, not going to complain. Hopefully Vinted gets the sale though, because no fees. So back into CEX for my final pickup, but I do have something to run by you as well, because I saw something behind the till when I was waiting for my games that I really want, and I don't know whether I should try and go for it or not, because it's a lot of money, but we'll get there. Anyway, the game in question, Fist of the North Star. I know next to nothing about this, apart from the fact that I think it was released in 2010. That's about it. This is complete and in unreal condition. There is not one single mark on the disc. It is so, so good. I wanted to sell this on eBay. I'm pretty sure I could command more than a tenner, but I don't. I want to keep it. But I need your opinion on this, actually. Is this any good? Have you played it? Let me know. It looks really, really good. The artwork is really nice and the, the style of it as well. It looks decent. How well it plays, I, I don't know. But it was originally 15. It came down to 12 and now it's just 10. I think that's a good price to pay for this game. Let me know in the comments what you think of it and especially if you have played it. So we're adding four games there, which is quite 
nice, three from CEX and Pagemaster, of course. However, we're not done because I saw something in CEX that really has my mind working overtime. So as I say, I'm waiting for my games and I have a little look behind the till. It's where they keep the consoles, the special editions, the steel books and what have you. I see an N64 and for some reason it doesn't really register what it is, but of course it's a fantastic. This is Jungle Green, I think. £375, I think that thing costs. But that is what I want in the collection. The N64 that we have is just a bog standard grey. I don't have any games for it right now and it's not because I don't want to collect for it necessarily. I'm trying to convince myself that collecting unboxed cart only N64 is fine and I don't have a problem with it because I do like everything to be boxed. But when it comes to Nintendo cardboard, I don't think I want to go down that road. When it comes to the console, however, the green console in particular is actually my favourite and it's the one that I want. Do I want it boxed? Obviously, if I had a choice, I would get it boxed. But £375 is a lot of money. I feel like I've been coasting along a little bit in this series recently, so I would like to get my teeth into a real challenge. And building up that amount of credit, to me anyway, that is going to be a challenge, especially with how bad Facebook has been recently and how overpriced these charity shops are becoming. I'm going to have to really rely on car boot sales, but I am going to have to try and dig deep and try and find value where other people are not finding it. So let me know in the comments what you think I should do. In the meantime, while I make my mind up, you can check out another video here. And until the next time, goodbye.